In this video we are gonna start finishing up this Mercedes SLC 350 that I've owned for the last seven years. Now if you haven't seen the video before this one you should check that out right now. I'm going through all of the things that we have done to this car and it's a really cool story. But now we can start finishing up this for the crazy road trip that's coming next year. But first before we can get working on this car I need to move it a bit on the right side because I don't have too much space. So let's move this car and start with the coolant change. Okay so now the car is on the jack stands so it's easier to work on. I also bought this rubber mat so it's way nicer to lay on the floor. The cooling system is now filled with water and then the cooling system cleaner. Here we have this radiator. Um, I think I'm going to drain it from this plug because I am pretty sure it's not going to make such a big mess from here. I try to keep everything as clean and nice as possible. So the coolant we are going to use is this G11. I think this should be kind of like the original that they used. You need to mix this with water so you have like 5 liters of this plus 5 liters of water then you will have a coolant that's good for minus 36 degrees. I haven't filmed any of this before so I'm going to figure out what's the best way to film what I'm doing probably with the GoPro or this one but let's see. I'll leave a comment if you have like any ideas how should I be filming, what do you want to see and yeah, stuff like that. But now we need to start draining the fluids out of the car. I started by removing the plug and I managed to avoid pretty much all of the mess. So there we go. Then I opened the reservoir cap and unplugged the upper hose to let some air in. That's like um, almost 10 liters, so I think there should be quite a lot of more still to come. So I unplugged the lower hose, hoping to get more of the coolant out, but this didn't help too much. So now there's around 10 liters of coolant, so there should be 4 liters more. I looked up from online and that bolt should be removed. Uh, it's from the engine block and then we should get more of the coolant out. So let's see if we can find a tool that will fit. Now here you can see me rounding up a bolt with the wrong size tool. That's a tight one. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's 19. Yeah, for sure it was. <laughs> How is this possible? 16, 17, 18, 20. So we are missing the 19 and that's exactly the one I need. What else would it be? Of course it has to be 19 and I don't have it. These are the kind of things why these projects take so long. Yeah, now I'm gonna figure out what to do. Now at this point my mind started to come up with some pretty creative ideas that you don't need to test, <laughs> let me show you what I tried. One solution could be that I have this uh, car dryer blower there. So if I would blow some air from here or there, maybe it would push all of the water from those holes out. I don't know. I can try it if I just blow here. Oh yeah seems to be working so I'm gonna get the blower. Maybe this one will be the solution that we need. Now that's closed so there are only two ways that the pressure can come out and that's on the bottom there and there. So yeah maybe we just... There we go. Now as you can see there was coolant coming out but it didn't come for a very long time. So I decided to try something else. Okay, so I got some of the coolant out like that, but I think that I will put this back to the car like so and tighten it up. And then I'm gonna blow from here. Let's try and go from the top. Something's coming out. Maybe the internet lied to me and there's less than 14 liters 
I don't believe so. I think there should be 14 liters, but okay. So the blower didn't help too much, but I found from the set that I have these uh, not metric. These are by inches, I believe. I think I'm gonna try one more time to open the drain plug from the engine plug with this one. Oh, this is working. I have a feeling that I'm about to make a mess. <laughs> I'm gonna do the rest by hand. Oh, yep. <laughs> Classic. Oh, well, there was a quite a quite a lot of this water. No way. <laughs> How are you supposed to do this? like this maybe. The floor is now cleaned. Um, we have new copper washers. Now these are the kind of things that you should always replace. I mean a set of these costs like next to nothing, maybe five euros, ten euros. So always replace every single one of these. It is so cheap and <laughs> it helps to avoid those nasty leaks. Finally, I had managed to drain the whole system. Now, all I needed to do was to plug everything back together and fill the reservoir with some new coolant. But the problems didn't end here. I'm waiting for the coolant to go down to the system. In the meantime, I think we could drain the oil. And the reason we are doing this oil change now is that this engine has been rebuilt and it has been machined and all of that. It has new piston rings and stuff like that. So we have done the first startup and I have driven about maybe 40 kilometers with these oils, but I really want to change them out and change the filter because you never know what's inside the engine after it has been rebuilt. We have this 20W50. This is like a classic car oil. Let's start by removing the drain plug and see what kind of mess we can make this time. When the oil had drained, I changed the washer from the drain plug and put it back in. From there I went to the oil filter and took that out. Um, this is the oil filter housing and as you can see, maybe you can see, there's quite a lot of dirt on the bottom. So I'm trying to get this bolt out of there so we can use this brake cleaner to clean everything out before we put the new filter on. I replaced the seal from the housing, cleaned it, put the new filter in and then put it back together. Now all of the oil has been drained out. It's right here. Uh, we have changed every single copper washer or crush washer that there was and we should be good to go to add this new oil to the engine. Oil level is good, we have some fresh oil, fresh filters, that's all good. Uh, I think I need to run the engine, but I'm gonna wait for tomorrow, so maybe the level will stay, maybe it will go down. Let's see, now it's almost full. I'm gonna see that in the morning and if I need to, then I have to take apart this beautiful insulation that I did so I can run the car and bleed the system, but yeah. Overall, good progress. Let's cut to tomorrow. Next morning, the coolant was on the same spot, so I took apart the insulation from the door and taped up the seams to my house and found out that the battery was dead. So I picked up a full battery and jump started the car with some cables. I switched the heater to the max so that coolant would go through the heater core. Then I topped off the reservoir and ran the engine, but I didn't see any bubbles and I felt like this was not working the way it should. Then I decided to try to fill the coolant from the top hose of the radiator. 
So then I just ran the engine and that actually worked and the engine started to bleed itself as you can see from the bubbles coming out. So yeah, uh, now all the basic stuff is done. That turned out to be a little bit more challenging than I thought. Uh, mainly because of my mistake of blowing air to this upper hose that probably caused all of the air blocks inside the engine. Next thing will be to install these splash guards in the wheel wells. I made these from plastic because the old ones were rusted away and they were quite expensive. So now I'm gonna go and pick up some seals for these from a hardware store. So I need the seal here to make all of this nice and flush. And before I can screw that on, I'm gonna spray this with some rust protector and that way it will last the rest of my life perfectly. But now I'm gonna head to the hardware store and pick up some seals for this. We are back from the store. Uh, I got this pretty good looking seal. Um, it's a pretty big one, but it is really squishy, so I think this will fit. Also, I got a pair of jack stands, because I only have two right now, and I would like to get this on four jack stands. But yeah, I'm gonna move the car now a bit forward, because I'm gonna need a bit more space right here to work on stuff on the table. So yeah, let's move the car and start working on those wheel wells. Now I had the car on the jack stands and I started to apply the rust protector with the spray gun. I used the paper towel to spread it evenly. But as you are about to find out, I did this again a few times with a better chemical because this one was so thin and it didn't really dry. Now I'm gonna go to the other side and do the same thing and then I'm gonna leave it drying for a few hours. Now this one is finished and I filled the bottle with this new one but this one seems to be way more thicker. This doesn't spray, it comes in a stream so this will be a bit different I think but yeah let's see how this goes. So I sprayed those streams and then wiped it with a towel. But for the second round, I found a way better solution for this. Okay, so a little update. Uh, on this side, everything looks really good. It is drying, it's been a few hours now. I sprayed a bit more on that side, so you have some streams, but that's all right. But yeah, this looks good. This was the new, new product, but on this side, it is still pretty shiny and it smells way more bad than the other one. So I think this product is not nearly as good as the new one. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the new one on this side as well. So if you're looking to buy one of these, definitely get this one. Seems to be working so much better than that one. Also, I just tried this kind of bottle and this is so much more easier to use without making a mess because you can do just like this and it will stay. <laughs> so kind of a shame that I just now realized that, but you know, it is what it is. I think I'm gonna go for another time because now it's so much easier to get it into spaces like this. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, this is like, like I was knowing what I'm doing. Of course it makes some mess, but you have to make a little mess when you're doing job like this. So I ended up doing new coats for the both sides and then I left it drying. For a long time I was not really looking forward to that job, but now it's done. So yes, really good. Next one will be to make the seals for these splash guards. Now we have the seal on the splash guard and I didn't cut it from the lower part yet because I don't know how long it will go. Let's make a little test fit. One handed. 
I'm gonna cut a piece from that top part there and then we're gonna see again because now we have a gap right here. Okay, try number two. Okay, so as you can see now the splash guard with the seal is fitting perfectly. There's no gaps, so no water can get past this point. So I think I'm gonna just cut the seal from here. Now we're just gonna leave the product drying and come back tomorrow morning. And it's the next morning. Look at this. It is pretty much dried. Everything looks good. This is now going to protect all of this work against the rust pretty well. So that's good. But I have messed up so bad. I mean like so bad with this little project that I had. As you can see, that's the door to my house from this garage. And it's all taped up from this side. Also from the other side. That's because when I woke up, um, I noticed that mm, there's some weird smell in this house. I went downstairs. It was the worst smell you could have. It's like old gasoline and old oil and uh, chemicals. And I immediately got a headache from that. And the smell was also creeping upstairs where we basically have our bedrooms and all of that. So as you could imagine, I didn't get too many compliments about the smell this morning. I'm so sorry about that. That was a totally mistake made by me. But yeah, now I had to take all of the insulation out again, open the door. It is minus 12 degrees outside, so that's not ideal. <laughs> and uh, I have the blower on, so it blows the bad smelling air out and hopefully I can get some fresh air back in. The result was really good on the wheel wells, but I messed up. Do not do this at your house or at your garage if you have a door to your house. I mean, the smell, I can't even describe how bad it is, but you should do this outside in the summertime. So yeah, that's a super stupid mistake by me. But now all I can do is hope that the smell disappears. So let's cut to like uh, the future where hopefully we have a happy ending to all of this. What a beautiful day. If something like this ever happens to you, you should clean the floors with some soapy water. That helps with the smell. I have tried that and learned that by now. But back to the video. The next day I got to install the splash guards. I measured roughly the places for the bolts so they would be as close to the edge as possible so I wouldn't make a hole inside the car. And then I drilled a small hole and used some bolts to attach the splash guards on their place. After that I test fitted the wheel arch liners and noticed that they would need a seal as well. So I went to the store and got more of the seals. And from there it was just simple bolting it up together. Okay, so now we have the fender liner in. Sorry, it's a bit messy. That's all right, we got the seal. Everything looks quite good and I don't know if you're supposed to have like seals here as well Maybe But yeah, now this side is done. We're gonna move to that side and we are gonna Do exactly the same things here and first start with the splash cards Okay, so that's it for this time. Some good progress on the Mercedes and uh, yeah, it's good to continue from here. Maybe next time we will finish up the interior or something like that. But please leave a comment 
about anything, about the car, about the video, about the editing, whatever. I just want to know what you think. Uh, if I can do something better, then that's good. If I did something wrong, you can tell me in the comments. Maybe we have some more experienced guys there. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button and like the video if you like it. If you don't like it, then dislike it, whatever. See you on the next time. It was so fun to make this and probably the next ones will be a hundred times better. So see you on those. Bye.